All right, welcome back. Um, it is now Friday. And I'm gonna prove the mean value theorem since I didn't do that on one thing. But also, you know, since I don't have your proofs, the examples were more important. So here we are. Um, let me let me remind us what the mean value theorem is. The mean value the theorem tells you that if you have a function, with two things. It has to be continuous and differentiable. Um, between two points, including at the points. So both of these. The derivative exists. Doesn't, it doesn't have to exist at the endpoint, <clears throat> as we'll see. Then there is a, a point between A and B, and it's neither of those um, with the derivative a very special number, which is the average slope between the two points on the graph at A and at B. Remember, like we saw on Wednesday, um, this number is the slope of this. Um, so it's not a, you know, it's not a random formula that came out of nowhere. For example, if the if the graph was a straight line, this would be this would be true for every C that we have that, that derivative. They will have the same slope. Um, also, so that's also why the theorem can't work for any other uh, formula. Uh, putting here, that is why this is this is the correct one. So I want to prove this. And the proof has a very sneaky idea. Um, the idea, more or less, is to tilt your head and apply roll theorem. If you have if you have a graph of a function, I'm trying to find the one or one of the points where the tangent has this slope. Fine or just prove it exists. <clears throat> if I kind of just turn the picture. Let's see if I can do, pull that off. So that this becomes horizontal. Um, then what I'm gonna have, well, it's a horizontal tangent, which means a, a derivative of zero. And that is what Rolle's theorem gives me. Um, if f of a is f of b, roll says, roll guarantees um, that there is that I can find this point with derivative zero. So now I untilt my head and, and, I get, and I get the answer. Now, I'm not literally gonna tilt my head because that would achieve nothing, but I'm also not gonna literally uh, rotate the graph uh, because you can't rotate a graph. Um, Um, I mean, I can, but I get a, if you rotate a graph, what you get 
it's a picture, not a graph. Um, for example, take this one. Y equals x squared. Yeah, that drew a pretty good parabola. What goes wrong if I rotate it? Well, uh, really the worst thing ever happens. See if I can draw it. What happened was that I, I failed a vertical line test. So uh, I don't get a graph anymore, um, which is very sad. Um, so I can't, I mean, maybe for some, some graphs you can rotate, um, but I, I need to prove this, meaning I need to do this for every function. So I'm not gonna get away with this. So I need to sort of find something else. So I need to, find something that changes the function. Uh, so basically that what, what I what I need desperately is for these two points to be on the same at the same height, so I can apply Rolle's theorem. But it, what I can do, what, it, the rotating doesn't work. <clears throat> so it has to be something that I can do to a function and get a function. And you can rotate a graph, but you, you get something else. Um, and that's something that I can do is this very, well, I don't know. I don't think it's a simple idea. It's a great idea, but it's obviously not my idea. If I want to change somehow this into this, what I can do, well, yeah. Away from going to from here to something like this uh, that is not rotating is subtracting the two functions. So if I have y equals f of x is whatever function I have, and this is a line, the way you, I can make this new function. And I'm going to write it as a function. So it's going to be guaranteed to be a function just by subtracting. And well, I mean, if you subtract, the new function is giving you the distance at every point uh, with a sign, depending on which is on top of which. So if I make it so that the line as to these two points, the distance here, they're actually they're both going to be zero. It doesn't matter, you know, it gives us right, this function as well. Um, so an example. <clears throat> Since I'm on a computer, I can graph stuff. What's the, what's the aspect ratio of a YouTube video? I think it's this one. Um, so I have a function, say this one. Actually, let's say this one, so it gets better. And I have the equation of a line, this line. 
uh, so what I want to do is subtract them. And let's see, uh, let's see if I can. So, although the thing is we can, we can do all sorts of things here, for example, we can do this little by little. For example, here when I make a equals to zero, I didn't subtract anything. And when I make equal a equals to one, I so I make equal a equals to zero. This formula is just the original function. I have this the same graph. When I make, and then if I increase, um, if I increase a, I'm adding a bigger chunk of p every time. Finally, when I make it equal to one. I've made it, um, I've, I've gone through F minus G and the two points, these two points where they intersected, I've subtracted um, X from Y in both of them. So, well, this one has gone to zero and this one has also gone to zero. And maybe it's useful to also draw what happens to the line. So I can do the same thing to the original line. So the line is getting rotated, uh, but I'm not literally, you, I mean, you can see it's, I'm not rotating. I'm doing something else, but it's gonna work. Uh, this kind of thing that I'm doing is just exactly the thing I want. I want to be doing. Um, you know, I could I could do this to a lot of different functions. Um, maybe so it goes to the same point. For example, this one, this function f, uh, just do the same thing. Subtract. X and then you will get this point. So go down to <clears throat> oh actually can you drag it? Oh it's so, it's so great. I love that one. I can drag it. Uh, so just make this point come down here. Oh, this is so awesome. This was, it's just incredible. Um, so kind of the idea now is this graph, nothing special about it. I can always do that. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, what I can see in this picture, I'm gonna go, go algebra the hell out of it. Uh, so, what I want to do for this proof is I have y equals f of x. And I want to find the equation of this line. And then subtract it from f of x to do what I was doing before, which is kind of just bring it down so that the endpoints are at the same level. And finally apply Rolle's theorem. So uh, that's what I'm doing, let's do it. Um, find the equation of this line. The line goes through two points. A, F of A. And B, F of B. <clears throat> and, well, I mean, I already computed the slope. The slope is the rise of the run, over run. 
So the line is one equals the slope times X. And then there's some number here. I don't care about this number. I'm not even gonna compute it. Because computing this number, if I know the slope, really it's all I need. Uh, if I change the number, I'm just gonna get a parallel line. And subtracting any parallel line is still, you know, if I subtract exactly these, this line, these two points are gonna go down to zero. I don't really need them to go down to zero. I just need this one to go uh, here. So, you know, I, then afterwards I could add a constant move them both up or down, but they would be moving at once. So, so what I'm gonna do is take a new function, which is a subtraction. I'm gonna go with G. G is the difference, f of x minus uh, the equation of a line. So according, so this function, I should be able to apply rule zero to it. <clears throat> So what, I need, what do I need for Rolle's theorem? I need uh, G to be continuous. That's, that's, that's true because F is continuous. This is the equation of the line. It's continuous and you can add continuous functions and you will get a continuous function. Um, wherever f was continuous. F, uh, g has to be differentiable. Uh, also wherever f was differentiable, which is also true for the same reason. Um, I just added a differentiable function. The derivative is just gonna be the difference. And then I need g of a to equal g of b. Uh, and that I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna check. g of a is f of a minus f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a times a. g of b is f of b minus f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a times b. I just, obviously the way to get it, g of anything is to replace the excess by anything. So replace the, the x's by a's, replace the x's by b's. Um, are those the same number? Oh my God. Um, I think they are the same number. I hope they are. My, my picture suggested that they are. Yeah, I'm gonna simplify this. G of A is, so let's just copy it again. F of A, F of B, F of A, divided by B minus A times A. And G of B, so this is where the X's used to be. So those are gonna be replaced by B's. At the bees. <laughs> uh, if I if I give a shit about editing, I would edit Nicholas Cage here now, but I won't. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> um, all right. Um, so are these two the same? I gotta simplify them uh, to see that they're indeed the same. So here's a fraction. I want to add it to this thing and it's not a fraction. Uh, I got to make it a fraction. And the way you make it a fraction, you know, you make a common denominator. The way you add one half of one third is you make them both as something divided by six. And the way you make one half into some number of sixths 
is you multiply by three in the numerator and denominator. And then once you have fractions with the same denominator, you can add them together. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. When I want to hear the denominator is not six, it's B minus A. And this A is of course multiplying everything. And this F of A is of course multiplying everything. So I have uh, B minus A in the denominator and a bunch of stuff in the numerator. Um, some, of, some of it is gonna cancel. F of A times B minus F of A times A. F of, F of B times A minus F of A times A. So what you see here is that these two cancel. All right, so that's a formula, whatever. Um, and I'm gonna go simplify Q of B the same way. Hopefully I get the same thing. Uh, make it the same denominator. F of B is the same denominator as before. Oh, oh my God. Oh, well, that's not, that's not what it is. Uh, I blame Nicholas Cage for that. Um, I, I had a subtraction here, I turned it into, I turned it into addition. Uh, so this is a subtraction. And this means that these don't cancel. Am I doing this wrong? Let's see, let's keep going. So, so, okay, so this didn't get to after all. That was just, that was just a lie. Um, So here what I have is f of b times b minus f of b times a minus f of b times b plus f of a times b divided by b minus a. So what am I doing wrong? It feels like I should be adding those two things instead of subtracting so that they would cancel like they're supposed to. But my picture was promising um, otherwise. Right. Give me a second. So silly. I think it's because I think it's the camera. I think the camera is making me stupid. Um, so this mistake is a mistake that keeps on giving because it's a mistake in front of some brackets. So this is a plus. Um, so what it cancels 
is these two things. And here, these two things were just canceling in front of my face and I missed them. So those two are the same. But anyway, why was I even doing this? That was, this was like not the way to go at all. Uh, this was the way to go. <laughs> so I have G of A. I mean, let me do this. Let me try this again. G of A is F of A plus F of B minus F of A. Um, and G of B is this formula. And he didn't wrote one on top of the other. This is screaming subtract me because I want to show that they're equal. Subtract them and see if they're and, and see if you got zero. Subtract. I'm going to subtract the top and bottom. G of B minus G of A equals. Um, so this is all getting a minus sign in front. So I'm getting F of B minus F of A. Here I'm getting F of B minus F of A divided by B minus A. Well, I'm getting two things with the same, multiplied by the same thing. I don't know if it's a lot, a lot of this or something. Um, and finally subtract by this thing, but there's a common factor there. That whole, this junker here is a common factor. And I can pull it out. Or if you prefer, there's fractions with the same denominator. Oops. Um, and once I pull out that common factor, what I'm left with is plus B and minus A. And now I can tell we did things the right way because these cancel. If you cancel the whole denominator, you're left with a one. Uh, oh my God, I'm completely wrong with this. Right. Um, this rule, I added, I added them instead of subtracting them. It's a, it's a lack of moral support from being in class. All right. Um, so other than a minus sign, now I get, they have the same thing twice I cancel. I get zero. All right. Anyway, this is why I drew a picture because that way I know what I'm supposed to get. And then I can keep fixing the algebra until I get it wrong. To be fair, copying from one slide to the next is difficult. All right, what, what the hell was that? All right, I'll try to do this. Um, so in conclusion, what took me a while to prove is that if you take this function where you took the original function, you took the average slope, you took a line with that slope and you subtracted those two functions. Um, you have a function that we can apply Rolle's theorem to. G prime of C for some C between A and B. G prime of C is zero. But of course, if G is this function, that means that this derivative is zero. And this derivative is F prime of X. And now I have this function looks complicated, but it's a number times X. I know the derivative with respect to x of a number times x. The derivative of a number times x is that number. I mean, it's the equation of a line. Its slope is the slope of the line. So 
So zero is f prime of x minus my magical number. So f prime, uh, not, not, not x, no, c. I'm playing in c. f prime of c is the magical average slope from the mean value theorem. I don't know what's called the mean value theorem. It should be called the average slope theorem. And there you go. Uh, we did it. That's the theorem. Um, I like the picture better than the algebra. But you take uh, you take your function, you subtract the equation on the line, and then you're going to apply Rolle's theorem. And you didn't quite rotate it. You did a kind of you you change the coordinates. What do you? They have a word for that. So some people call it um, shear. They got it. Shear. Where you take your your plane and you make it go this way. All right. So here's an example of the. So in class on Wednesday, I showed the kind of obligations we care about of the mean value theorem. Here's somewhere, something where I don't care about it. Um, take this function. It's continuous, it's differentiable. F of zero is zero. F of one is one. The mean value theorem says for some C, uh, in between zero and one, the derivative is, is this formula, f of one minus f of zero divided by one minus zero, um, which I just said is one. It's what you got plugging in, which is one. That's another good picture of a parabola. Let's try to do better. If I join zero and one, I get a line of slope um, of slope one in this case. So there is somewhere in here where the derivative is one. And of course, if I have an example, I can find it, uh, which the only thing that proves is that I understood what the theorem says. Um, because I'm not going to do much with it, but I can find it, of course, the derivative is 2x, I mean, it's a polynomial. It's, we know this. Um, so if the derivative is one, this means that c is one half, because two c has to be one. All right, that's it, this mean value theorem. Um, I'll come back with some examples for from 4.3. All right. Follow me on TikTok.